Next speaker will be Professor Cho Sotong, who is currently the president of the Myanmar GI and Liver Foundation, who is extremely active in all the academic activities. And Professor Cho Sotong usually presents with all the most up-to-date uh, facts and uh, with all the very lively cartoons. Professor Cho Sotong will be speaking on the cardiometabolic comorbidities of the Nevali, more than one disease. Professor Cho Sotong, please. That's it. Well, good evening, Professor Nel Arora. Good morning, Professor Arun Chanya and all my colleagues. And thank you, if, thank you, Stefan, for sponsoring this masterclass in NASH. Today, I will be talking on cardio metabolic comorbidities of NAPA. Is it of more than one disease? I have no conflict of interest for this presentation. So this is the spectrum of NFLD, and I hope of the woman they has tell you about this. So the pathophysiology of NFLD is a complex and it is multifactorial. Disease, a diet, mainly the Western diet, uh, with this high calorie, high fructose corn syrup and genetics, in particular, polymorphism of the plantula 3 gene, obesity with edible tissue expansion, enhanced lipolysis, insulin resistance, resulting in lipotoxicity, mitochondrial dysfunction, production of re reactive oxygen species, ER stress, autophagy, apoptosis, inflammation, activation of EVs, and ultimately HSD activation leading to fibrogenesis. And it probably acts in a different manner along with the different phase of the disease leading to both liver specific and extrahepatic manifestations. These are the spectrums and the percentage. And these are the histological pictures of uh, different stages of nephil. And these are the diagnostic criteria and the different biomarkers for different stages of nephil, which Professor Wojnowski has just now mentioned it. I would like to touch a few on the dynamic natural history of nephilty. It is not a linear or it is a steady progressive disease. You can see that a hepatitis between NASH and steatosis is began waxing and waning. Also, the fibrosis is a rapid progression or it can regress again. Now there will be a progression and regression throughout the fibrotic stages. And they are 20% of rapid progressors and majority are slow progressors. So this is a <coughs> this shows the dynamic natural history of NAFA. And then the risk of morbidity and mortality increases with the fibrosis stage. These are the secondary causes of abetic stetosis, including leanness. Actually, NASRD is a multi system disease. <clears throat> As Professor Wednesday has said, the outcome of NASRD ends up in with type 2 diabetes, the cardiovascular comorbidities, kidney comorbidities. Obstructive sleep apnea, thyroid, most of all the malignancies, including other outcome type psoriasis and osteoporosis. Since 1997, 
dan komen de multiple subjects met multiple comorbidities with never has increased, as shown by this picture. The impact of NEFL on the incident metabolic complications and mortality in reference to Asian sex mass controls are as showed. People with NEFL compared to without a NEFL in age mass controls, they have a 2.6 times higher risk of getting one metabolic homopathy. And then it is more than 1.6 for two metabolic and 1.62 from two to three metabolic morbidities. And the death rate is high in NEFA than the HMESH control of normal population. The impact of NEFA on mortality decreases as the number of this metabolic condition increases. So this is the schematic mutative mechanism for the development of extrahepatic disease in patients with NEFR. As I have already mentioned in the pathogenesis, <coughs> the adipose tissue and the liver crosstalk with this inflammatory cytokines leading to IR and this insulin resistance leading to fatty position in the liver, causing type 2 diabetes uh, through hyperglycemia, hyperuricemia, and the pro-inflammatory pro mediators and oxidative stresses, which will lead to atherogenic cardiovascular diseases also. Later on, it will lead to extrahepatic malignancies like rectal cancer through this pro-inflammatory mediators and then neonogenesis. There is increased cell growth and proliferative secondary to reduce antiponectin, increased leptin, insulin resistance, IGF increased IGF and increased PGF. The complex interplay of nephil and cardiovascular disease. And in this complex interplay, interplay, the liver is centrally positioned in the metabolic syndrome where nephil can be considered as a consequence of mechanism driven by the other components of the metabolic syndrome. However, reciprocal crosstalk exists where the liver may actually drive diabetes mellitus or cardiovascular disease. These synergistic effects become more complex and create a vicious cycle. These are the summary of potential pathophysiologic mechanisms responsible for increased cardiovascular disease in network. So, both the endocardium, the myocardium, are involved due to in this nephility where the genetic and the adipogenesis and the dysbiosis has played a role. And these are the potential pathophysiologic mechanisms that are responsible for increased cardiovascular disease in NEPR. They are diastolic dysfunction, LV remodeling, order electrical conduction leading to atrial fibrillation and cardiac arrhythmias, and the aortic birth calcification, and they are vascular wall abnormalities, endothelial dysfunction, the redox status, leading to increased homocysteine and unaltered homocysteine. They are increased oxidative low-density lipoprotein. They are disturbed liver profile. The angiogenesis is increased. The hemostasis is disturbed with pro-coagulative activities. 
inflammatory cytokines like interleukin 6, ENF alpha are also increased. And also the hepatokines, parasite cell signaling are also increased. Other mechanisms causing cardiovascular disease are sarcopenia and hypovitaminosis D. And the genetics, as I've said, Pembla 3 and PMS, PM6 SF2 mutation leads to nephrol. If you look at the stroke patients, the biochemical markers in nephrol patients has increased ALT ASD compared to controls. If we look at the diabetes and pregnancy of diabetes on histological traits and interaction between personnel and families of diabetes, we can see that in NASH and in NASH fibrosis, the personal history of diabetes has increased in NASH and fibrotic people. And second is the family history compared to normal persons. The other comorbidity, the big comorbidity is uh, chronic kidney disease. From nephil, the and the share the common visual obesity, arterial hypertension, estrogenic dyslipidemia, type 2 diabetes, metabolic syndrome, hepatic systemic insulin resistance, leading to low grade inflammatory state, pro thrombotic state, infrequency acid levels, or leading to, they are sharing the common platform for the And if you can look at the NASH and controls, in NASH persons, they are abnormal in albuminuria and increased in the incidence of CKD. And the EGFR is reduced exponentially with the severity of fibrosis. The potential mechanism and factors linking this nephrod and CKD is the unhealthy, high caloric, dense fiber poor diet leading to dysbiosis, leaking of this lipopolysaccharides, ethanol, short chain fatty acids like nitrate, propionate, acetate, which the liver has to metabolize. And these liver metabolized can disturbed or leads to renal dysfunction and leading to chronic kidney diseases. Other extrahepatic manifestations of nephil are metabolic syndrome, where nephil, NASH, and severe fibrosis, and uh, people with Metabolic syndrome are associated with a higher overall mortality in nephil. The visceral adiposity, the visceral adiposity causes a higher risk for nephil than a subcutaneous adiposity. Every diabetes, of course, increases the severity of nephil, and nephil can also increase the type 2 diabetes. As I've already stated, the cardiovascular comorbidities are common with nephil, the chronic kidney diseases, and also hypothyroidism, psoriasis, and PCOS, polycystic ovarian syndrome, are common in nephil patients. Not only that, the urolithiasis, osteoporosis, periodontitis, and male sexual dysfunction are common in people with non-alcoholic fatty liver diseases.
not only the metabolic dysfunctions, they are also extrahepatic cancers from nephil through the insulin resistance and dysfunctional adipose tissue, inflammatory cytokines and hepatokines, and the dysbiosis leading to extrahepatic malignancies like prostate, lung, breast cancers, skin cancers, renal, and even lung cancers are common in nephrology patients. So is nephr a single disease? But liver involvement, you can see that liver involvement of nephr has various stages. And then nephr, or maybe sharing the common platform, have so many comorbidities like diabetes, cardiovascular risk, and kidney and malignant risk. And these are the mechanisms through the uh, excessive caloric intake leading to nephil, obesity, and the risk of CBD. But if we go down to the genetics, the genetic markers for nephrology is quite different from cardiovascular disease genetic background if we rule out the obesity and diabetes. So these are the epigenetic mechanisms, microRNAs involving in the pathogenesis of this nephrology. I can go into detail about this. So as we see, the nephil is a very important disease and still with a very big economic burden and with the current lack of every approved therapies, nephil involves a highly complex interplay that calls for multi to multi-omic approaches. These are the multi-omic approaches, finding novel markers, genes, and biological, biological pathways involved in different phases of nephil, and molecular connections between nephil and its comorbidities. And these mechanisms and opening sex differences, and probably for Drugable, uh, drugable patterns. So, if I have to conclude my presentation, the nephrology implies that it is a non alcoholic fatty liver disease, comparing alcoholic fatty uh, the commonality between alcohol consumption causing this balloon, ballooning degeneration and steatosis from non-alcoholic users. As we call it a nephil, we have neglected the most important part of the metabolic comorbidities of this nephil, which causes the greatest mortality in this nephil patient. So this is the one proposed by Professor Arun Sanyer. The metabolic, metabolic dysfunction predominant fatty liver and alcohol predominant fatty liver. In there, it can be divided into metabolically predominant fatty liver without any alcohol and then metabolically predominant fatty liver with uh, some amount of alcohol consumption. And in, also in the alcoholic fatty liver, there will be no metabolic dysfunction and people with metabolic dysfunction. I think with this um, weak clinicians will be more aware of the metabolic consequences of this nephrology and the management approach and management planning will be more appropriate 
and more beneficial for our patients with uh, nephrology. With that, I would like to conclude my presentation and thank you, IFAM and NDCS for organizing. Thank you very much. Thank you for your kind attention. Seafarm, caring for well-being.